in this video, we're gonna take a look at the Retro 51 Tornado. Let's jump straight to the end and start with my thoughts on this pen. Here's a pen that sadly isn't available anymore as they've shut their doors. I do find it to be a really good writer, very comfortable in the hand. If I were to say anything that as a negative for it, which was really about what I chose, is mine is all plastic, including the section. Now, I do understand that they improved the section later on, but I never got one of those later improved sections. So this is the only one I can talk about. And the section does feel cheap, but it doesn't have any kind of a performance issue. This pen writes really well. I can say that if it had a metal section, the added weight would have been very welcome. This is a very light pen. And I like my pens lighter. This is just a bit lighter than I would prefer. Now, with that, I think it's very interesting as a writer because the nib for me at times sings given the right paper and ink combination. And I think singing nibs are very cool. Not cool if you're sitting in a meeting with a bunch of people and your pen is singing away it'll get a little bit of unwanted attention then, but when you're alone and your nib sings, it's very cool. Now that we know how I feel about the Retro 51 Tornado, let's see how I got to that opinion, starting with the unboxing. The Retro 51 Tornado came in a very unique packaging, a tube like this. Retro 51 had some very unique packaging and this pen was no different with that very cool tube. Now, it does mean that they had an interesting look entirely of their own whenever you got one of their pens, which is appreciated, but the tube is a little less convenient for storage. With the pen out of the box, we need to get to the nib. And as long as it doesn't take 20 turns to uncap a pen, I'm generally okay. But how many turns does it take to uncap this pen? The Retro 51 Tornado takes one, two, and a quarter turns to uncap. This is a bit excessive to uncap at two and a quarter turns. It really feels like you have to be dedicated to what you want to write. And if it's a fleeting thought, by the time you get this cap off, you may have lost it because I'm old and sometimes ideas get away from me. And in two and a half turns, or two and a quarter turns, see, I'm old, I might lose it. This gets us to the nib. This has a steel broad nib. This nib certainly has some interesting scroll work and nice branding on it. And I always appreciate when a company brands their nibs for their own, even when the nibs themselves are outsourced like this Bach nib. If you enjoy videos like this, then be sure to hit the subscribe button. Now, let's ink this pen up. The Retro 51 Tornado is a standard international cartridge or converter that holds approximately 0.7 milliliters of ink. The ink for today is Graf von Faber-Castell's Royal Blue. This is not a branded standard international converter, but it's definitely not the cheapos that you can find on eBay. It doesn't fit in the section as well as I would like it. I would have preferred it to be a little tighter in there, but my section hasn't dropped off into any ink, so I guess it's tight enough.
As a habit, I don't normally post my pens, but some people prefer to post their pens, and some pens need to be posted in order to be used comfortably. This pen does post deeply and securely, no problems. It's got a band that keeps it protected. It does get a bit heavier because the most of the metal is back here at the top of the cap. I find I can frequently use it not posted. So it comes back plenty far enough and it's got the girth that it doesn't make me feel I need to. So I hold on to the cap, which is largely my habit with pens. Now the important part, the writing sample. Writing with this pen, you really do notice how much the section does taper down, and with me, I hold a bit farther back to stay away from that taper. Also, quite interesting about it is the tapered section is slicker to hold on to than the body of the pen, which is another reason that it's helpful that I hold the pen a bit farther back. Now it's long enough that I don't have to use it posted, which is very nice and I appreciate. It's also quite comfortable in the hand, even being as light as it is, because this is a, a very light pen. And perhaps if I just posted it simply for the sake of adding a little bit more weight, I would like using it even more. Not that I don't like using it, but I can honestly say that this is not a pen that I frequently run to use going, ooh, I haven't used this in a long time, which is why it kind of stays in the rotation to be used for doing reviews because it makes sure that I use it. If I wasn't doing any kind of reviews, then I don't know that I would ever use it. It might just sit on a shelf as a now brand that's gone. I did hear at a time that there were some people that had basically they're plastic, so you can damage the bodies of these. So I'm sure if I needed to, I could find replacement parts. I don't see it being much of an issue. Like I said, I don't go out of my way to really use this pen. It comes out from time to time. It's interesting enough. It is certainly very glossy black and nice looking, but I don't know that I have much else I can say. There's nothing standout amazing and there's nothing really bad about it. Now for something a bit more standard in comparing writing size. I use Namiki Blue to do this. Here it is with a Yovo Extra Fine on the left, medium in the middle, and a 1.1 stub on the right. I like the Bach nibs, the older Bach nibs, where people were complaining about them and more people tend to prefer the Yovos. I'm glad this had the Bach nib because I had never had a Bach nib that I know before this one, and I do find it a bit softer to use while I'm writing, and that soft experience with the nice, constant broad line is pleasant. But how does this pen compare to other nibs I've used? Looking at the writing of a Retro 51 Tornado with a broad nib, here it is next to a Twisby Eco with a broad, a Pilot Custom 823 with a broad nib. A Franklin Kristoff Model 66 with a broad nib. A Visconti Medici Oversized with a broad nib. A Pilot Metropolitan with a 1.0 stub. And a Pelican M1000 with a medium nib. That's a Pelican M800, my bad.
so it isn't a review without some size comparison. Here it is capped. Here it is uncapped. And here it is posted. A completely average sized fountain pen that does exactly as it should do. And I see that being very helpful to most people. There's an average range in pens for a reason. Let's clean this pen now that it's dirty. Be sure to check out the next pen review where we take a look at the Sailor 1911 Standard. Do you have a cartridge converter pen that didn't come with a converter? Have I got news for you! Our Standard International Converter! That's right, if you act now, you can have your very own Standard International Converter for just $19.95. Not guaranteed to fit, as all Standard International Converters are not standard size. If you want to be able to support not just my channel, but any reviewer, then when you make a purchase, be sure to tell that retailer where you heard about it. Thanks for watching.